Australia has a wide variety of frogs, from big green tree frogs through to the tiny yellow and black corroboree frogs. I'm Dr. Jenny Gray, I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Zoos Victoria, and today I'd like to share with you some of the incredible work we're doing behind the scenes to work with these guys who, while this one's huge, the ones I'm going to show you are a whole lot smaller. So this is uh, some corroboree frogs here. So you can hear in the background we've got all our males calling. So it is breeding season, it's um, peak time at the moment. So all the females are in there coupling up with the males and uh, producing some eggs. I'm joined by Damien Goodall. Damien is an amphibian specialist here at Melbourne Zoo. Damien, tell us a little bit, what is an amphibian specialist? Well, amphibians are frogs, so that's what I look after here at Melbourne Zoo is the frogs and part of the uh, recovery programs for a lot of threatened species of frogs that we have here at Melbourne Zoo. Were you a little kid who grew up always loving frogs or have you come to this later in life? No, absolutely. I grew up yeah, keeping frogs and lizards and other types of reptiles at home and that's what I specialise in, is looking after reptiles and frogs and understanding how to actually breed them and uh, now using all that knowledge here at Melbourne Zoo to um, help conserve them. So we're going to talk about probably Australia's favourite frog, or at least one of the most identifiable frogs, that's the corroboree frog. Here at Melbourne Zoo we have a recovery program for the southern corroboree frog, which is yeah, one of Australia's most iconic species. Um, very unique in their um, patterns, being uh, yellow and black. And also, this particular species is only found in high altitude up at Mount Kosciuszko. And so being an alpine species, they're very sensitive and uh, there's a lot to learn about how to actually breed these frogs and uh, the impact that's having on these wild populations from introduced things like chytrid fungus is really having a detrimental impact. And so therefore, they're now critically endangered. The major problem is a disease that has come in, um, chytrid fungus, it's a skin fungus? Yes, yeah, so it does grow on the skin of the frogs and uh, it's affecting frog populations worldwide. So uh, yeah, what it does is it actually um, grows on the frog skin, pretty much suffocates them and uh, unfortunately it's not a very nice death for the frogs. We don't know exactly how many are left in the wild. These surveys going on every year and there's researchers up there and they're hearing less than 20 males calling. 20 left in the wild is just a it's a staggering number I mean it's less than a school class that's it yeah. that's the whole population but there is a bit of hope for this frog because organizations like Melbourne Zoo, Zoos Victoria, Taronga, zoos all around Australia have been working to try and save the species and you've learnt a lot and you now have a lot of them here in care. Yeah that's right so here at Melbourne Zoo we've been understanding and looking after the corroboree frogs in captivity for now for over 20 years and I guess in the last 10 years we've had a purpose-built facility we've really worked out how um, how to breed these frogs in captivity and can breed them in large numbers now. So everything that uh, is bred in captivity from Hillsville, Taronga and Melbourne Zoo, we, um, we release those eggs back up into Mount Kosciuszko. But the great thing is, is that we've also um, been involved in building 22 disease-free enclosures up at Mount Kosciuszko where it's chytrid free and uh, giving the, ch the chance for these eggs to thrive and uh, develop into healthy robust frogs so they can uh, continue in their own environment to um, support their species while in the meantime we're trying to find a way of uh, resolving the chytrid fungus issue. There's a lot more work that we need to do into looking for a gene that uh, makes the frogs immune to the chytrid fungus. So there's a lot of research going into that at the moment and hopefully we'll be able to find that gene so we then can breed that into our population here at Melbourne Zoo. So whatever frogs that we do release back into the actual wild sphagnum bogs have got a greater chance of surviving. What an incredible dream to find 
a gene that we can help next generations be, be robust enough to cater with this kind of threat. Because we know with climate change, we know with introduced diseases, they literally can run across species as we are seeing now. What, what is your dream for, for corroboree frogs? What, what would your success look like? Uh, well, yeah, I guess the, the most important thing is that we look after their environment where they still exist. And, uh, you know, the natural sphagnum bogs are really delicate ecosystems that really need protecting. And uh, so things like introduced hoofstock um, are having a huge impact on some of those environments like pigs and deer and horses. So that uh, really needs to be managed so we can look after those sphagnum bogs. So when we've got the uh, magic gene for um, these frogs and we can release them back into their natural habitats, they're going to thrive again. Now I've got to get us to tell a quick story. The habitat that they live in was very badly impacted by bushfires last year. And when you went up to do the surveys, tell us a little bit about that. You would have gone with a lot of trepidation to go and see where they, these frogs have been. Yeah, with the recent fires, um, unfortunately it did wipe out some of the field enclosures that were being built up there. But luckily with the way that they were designed and built, there was um, some moist areas where surprisingly these frogs were able to retreat and we did find some survivors, which was brilliant. Well, I'm hoping that the story for the survival of the corroboree frogs follows this trajectory. You have done so much work on this incredible little creature. It's tiny. It's black and yellow, it's full of attitude. Um, they really deserve a fighting chance and, and we're so excited that we're able to work with them. And, and thank you, Damien, for all the incredible work you do. Good luck with the program. Right. Thank you. Many of our conservation breeding programs are off display and it's very hard to see the work we're doing. But the Southern Corroboree Frog here at Melbourne Zoo is on display. You can come and spend some time, learn about the work that's going on but also see what it takes to help save a species. So next time you're here in Melbourne Zoo, pop down to the world of frogs and have a look at this incredibly important work that's being undertaken.